Hello, everyone. Welcome to the serial lectures on traditional Chinese culture. Today, we shall appreciate the poetic symbols of Chinese characters and the flying strokes of calligraphy. In recent years, the numbers of Chinese language learners across the world have been on the rise, and the students are really diversified. If the students come from South Korea, Japan, or Vietnam, it would be much easier for them to learn Chinese characters because they belong to the Chinese character cultural circle. They also use Chinese characters. The Chinese character cultural circle is also called East Asia cultural circle. On the map, China, Korea, Japan, and Vietnam are all located in East Asia. The Chinese character cultural circle is also known as Confucianism cultural circle because Confucianism is the prevalent ideology in the circle together with Mahayana Buddhism, the big vehicle Buddhism. Chinese language is ideogram. However, there are many Chinese language learners whose mother tongue is phonogram, phonetic language. They often find Chinese characters difficult to learn. However, if they dip into it, they may discover the historical and the cultural insight behind those poetic symbols and feel delighted. The legendary figure Cang Jie was supposed to have coined or created Chinese characters. Here we can see the 28 characters created by Cang Jie in Luonan, Shanxi province. Just a legend. Actually, it was almost impossible for a single person to coin the characters. Here, I'd like to give you a brief introduction to a book, The Origin of Chinese Characters. It was written by a famous linguist of the Eastern Han Dynasty, Xu Shen. Written nearly 2,000 years ago, it was the first dictionary in the world collecting more than 9,000 characters. According to the origin of Chinese characters, the structure of Chinese characters falls into six categories. Pictograph is also known as hieroglyph, depicting the image or the shape being single character. Self-explanatory character is relatively abstract, pointing out the position being single character. Associative compound is compound character. Pictophonetic character 
is compound character. The majority of Chinese characters falls into this type. Mutually explanatory characters can explain one another. Phonetic loan character just borrows the existing character to express new meaning. Pictograph, self-explanatory character, associative compound, and pictophonetic character are the four main types. Mutually explanatory character and phonetic loan character are not many and not very important. Shall we begin with pictograph or hieroglyph? Pictograph is single character. There are 364 characters taking up 4% of all the characters collected in this book. Pictograph is poetic and picturesque, depicting or portraying the image or shape. Every character is a poem or a picture. It would be troublesome or time-consuming to write the pictographs, actually to draw pictures like a tiger. Many characters take variant forms. It must have caused confusion. It would be difficult to express abstract concept. Shall we learn some pictographs? This pictograph is the sun. A circle with a dot in the middle, just like the glaring sun. Three peaks symbolize the numerous peaks of the mountain range. So this pictograph is mountain. The crescent is the moon. All the three are also radicals. This pictograph means person. We can see the profile or flank or side of a human figure who is standing vertically. It, it can also be used as a radical concerned with human being. This hieroglyph means big looking like the front of a human figure with the arms and the legs. The pictograph female portrays a human figure who is kneeling down and holding hands together in the front, implying that in the feudalistic society, female was inferior to male. This character means mother, just adding two dots to female. The two dots symbolize the breasts. The character son looks like an infant in the swaddle with a big head, arms, and with legs putting together.
The pictograph wood looks like a tree. In the upper part, we can see the branches. In the lower part is the root of the tree. It can also be used as a radical, connected with trees and woodware. The pictograph fire, flame, or blaze is vivid and true to life, really lifelike. The pictograph eye looks like the eye, with orbit and eyeball. Orbit is the rim of the eye. It is a written character. This pictograph means clothes. We can see the collar, two sleeves, and the front of the clothes. This hieroglyph resembles a tiger. We can see the stripes, teeth, and the tail of a ferocious tiger. Here is the hieroglyph ox or bull. The vertical line represents the face. The two strokes on the top indicate the horns. The two strokes below indicate the ears. Here are the pictographs of Chinese zodiac, the twelve animals. The twelve animals of Chinese zodiac are mouse, ox, tiger, hare, dragon, snake, horse, sheep, monkey, chicken, dog, and pig. As we see, the pictographs vividly depict the twelve animals. Really true to life. This hieroglyph means ghost. In the lower part is a human figure, and on the top is a terrible head. It is the imaginary freak, the strange monster. The hieroglyph vehicle looks like the chariot or carriage for transportation on land. How to express the abstract concept of being long, an adjective, with specific and concrete image? A person is wearing long hair. Isn't it ingenious? How to express the concept of being old? We can see a person with thin and scant hair, with humpback or hunchback, wearing long beard. Not mustache. Fight is a verb. Two persons are fighting with each other. Their hair standing on end in anger. Their hair is bristling with fury. The second type is self-explanatory character, also single character. 
there are 125 characters, not many, occupying 1% of all the characters collected in this book. Self-explanatory characters are the symbolic signs. They can express relatively abstract concept, pointing out their position or relationship. Pick up and down, for example. The long horizontal indicates the boundary. Add a short horizontal above it, representing the upper part. Add a short horizontal below it, signifying or denoting the lower part. This character means middle. China literally means the Middle Kingdom. We can see the banners, flags, streamers, and the ribbons waving or fluttering in the wind. The flagpole is standing right in the middle. Just point out the position. This is a poetic character meaning morning. It reminds us of the rising sun in the morning. The upper part is the pictograph, the symbol of the sun. The lower part denotes the horizon. The sun is rising above the horizon. So picturesque. How to express the abstract concepts of the basis, the fundamental, and the tip, the non-essential? This pictograph is wood. Just add a short horizontal at the bottom, signifying the location of the root, the fundamental. Add a short horizontal on the top of the wood, pointing out the position of the tip of the tree, indicating the non-essential. The third category is associative compound, which is compound character. There are more than 1,000 characters, quite a few, accounting for 12% of all the characters collected in the book. Associative compound combines two or more single characters to express new concept, making use of existing pictograph or self-explanatory character. What is meant to be good or nice in the ancient times? This associative compound combines two pictographs, the infant and the female. A woman who is able to give birth to a son is meant to be good. This associative compound means bright, combining two pictographs, the sun and the moon. With the glaring sun and the shining moon, it is indeed bright.
This associative compound means stand. A human figure is standing vertically on the ground. The horizontal below indicates the ground. This associative compound refers to nip, clamp, or clip, carrying something under the arms. In the middle is the front of a human figure. And the two persons are pressing him from both sides, trying to confine and restrict him. This is another picturesque and beautiful character, meaning dusk or sunset. The sun is going down into the grass. In the middle is the sun, and there is grass around it, on the top and at the bottom. What is meant to be beautiful? The associative compound combines two pictographs: sheep on the top. And a big at the bottom. If a sheep is big, it is beautiful. This associative compound means pregnant. A woman is pregnant with an infant in the womb, in the abdomen. This character is home. If there is a pig under the roof, the house becomes a home. This character means safe and peaceful. If there is a woman under the roof, at home, it's safe and sound. There will be no danger. This associative compound means burn. We can see the pictograph fire, or blaze, or flame in the lower part, and woods in the upper part. In the ancient times. When people go hunting, they usually burn the woods to drive the wild animals out, to drive the beasts out, so that they can hunt and shoot. This associative compound means see. In the lower part is the human figure. Add a big I above the human figure in order to highlight the I, meaning C. Grove and forest are formed by stacking and piling up the pictograph wood. Two woods. Make a grove. Three woods make a forest. This associative compound means having a rest. A person is leaning against a tree, signifying taking a rest. The fourth type is pictophonetic character, which is compound character. There are seven thousand seven hundred characters 
taking up 81% of all the characters collected in the book. The overwhelming majority of Chinese characters falls into this type. It is the main type, the most important type. The pictophonetic character consists of two parts, ideogram and phonogram. Ideogram is the radical or component indicating the meaning or property. Phonogram is the note indicating the pronunciation or sound. In the middle of the chart, we can see the character Qing. Qing is the color between blue and green. Bluish green, greenish blue, or black. Is it ideogram or note? Here, Qing is mostly the note indicating the pronunciation just similar pronunciation not very accurate ideograms are the radicals or components indicating the meaning shall we begin with the character on the top and then run clockwise. The character on the top is Qing, meaning clean and pure. The radical on the left being three drops of water. Next to it is Qing, meaning fine and sunny, the radical on the left being the sun. Qing refers to dragonfly, the radical being worm. Jing denotes essence, energy, or extract. The radical being rice. The character Jing means quiet, tranquil, and peaceful. It is the only exception here. Qing is put on the left being the radical. The right part is the note. Jing refers to eyeball. The radical on the left being eye. Qing means please. The radical on the left being speech. Qing means feelings or affection, the radical being vertical heart. Mutually explanatory character is not very important. There are only 115 characters occupying just 1% of all the characters collected in the book. There is a pair of characters with the same meaning, with the same radical, and with similar pronunciation. They can explain one another. Actually, they are burdensome and troublesome.
Here we can see a pair of characters, Kao and Lao. They have the same meaning, being old. They have the same radical and similar pronunciation, Kao and Lao. They can explain one another. They are burdensome and troublesome. So people nowadays only use Lao to denote being old, while Kao usually refers to examination. The last type is phonetic loan character. There are only seven characters, very few, taking up only 0.07%. In oral language, there appears the new concept, the new meaning. However, there is still no written character. Just borrow the form and the pronunciation of one existing character to express new concept. Thus, this character has got one new meaning. For example, order is an associative compound. The upper part, meaning to gather together, while the lower part is a person who is kneeling down, waiting for the order. In oral language, there appears the new concept of county magistrate, head of a county. Just borrow the existing character order to express the new concept of county magistrate. Another example is the pictograph long, depicting a person wearing long hair. Just borrow it to express the new concept of captain, head, chief or leader. The famous literary figure, the man of letters, Lu Xun, said, there are three beauties of Chinese characters. Chinese characters have beautiful conception to be savored by heart. Chinese characters have beautiful sound to be savored by ears. The four tones and neutral tone sound undulating and rhythmic. Chinese characters have beautiful shape to be savored by eyes. The calligraphy is really artistic and beautiful. We can describe Chinese characters as looking like a picture and hearing like a song. Now, shall we move on to the evolution of Chinese calligraphy? Calligraphy is regarded in China as the art of writing or the regulation of writing, not just fine handwriting. Chinese calligraphy originated in the Shang dynasty and matured in the Wei and Jin dynasties. Writing brush appeared very early. It was invented by General Meng Tian of the Warring States period. 
while your paper was invented by Cai Lun in the Eastern Han Dynasty. Here we take the character Wang for example. Wang is a popular surname in China, meaning king. There are 100 million kings in China. The character Wang is a pictograph depicting the image of X. X is the ritual object used in sacrificial ceremony, symbolizing the authority of the king. Here we can see the evolution of the character Wang from oracle inscription through bronze inscription, lesser seal character, clerical script, regular script, cursive hand to running hand. Giant seal character is just the transitional style. The earliest style is oracle inscription, engraved or carved on tortoise shell or beast bone with knife. The second style is bronze inscription, cast on ancient bronze object. Next, the giant seal characters are carved on stone blocks with knife. It is the transitional style. In the early styles, the characters take variant forms. It must have caused confusion. The strokes of lesser seal characters are determined and finalized. There is only one form. Lesser seal characters are tall and narrow, either carved or written on stone, cliff, and a precipice, with knife or writing brush. The above mentioned are styles of the ancient stage. The present stage begins with the clerical script. Clerical script is the watershed, changing the curly strokes into straight and angular ones. Clerical script, also called official script, is short and wide written on stone, cliff, and bamboo slip. Regular script is square in shape, angular, non-cursive, and architectural in style. It is the model of Chinese script, written on paper and stone. Cursive hand and a running hand are auxiliary styles of regular script. Shall we begin with oracles? Oracles are inscriptions on tortoise shells or beast bones engraved with knife. The contents are mostly oracles and divinations, predictions, carved on turtle belly or abdomen 
not the back. Turtle back is too hard to carve. Take a close look, and we may find the pictographs. Zi, Ri, Wang. Zi is sun, looking like an infant in the swaddle, with a big head, arms, with legs putting together. Ri is the sun. We can see a circle with a dot in the middle, just like the glaring sun. Wang means king, in the shape of axe. Axe is the ritual object used in sacrificial ceremony, symbolizing the authority of the king. Here are the scraps, debris, or fragments of oracle bones, excavated and unearthed from Yin Dynasty ruins in Anyang, Henan Province. Ox bone is the blade bone, the shoulder bone of ox. Here we can recognize the pictographs Ri, Ren, Tian. Ri is the sun. Ren is person. We can see the profile or flank or side of a human figure who is standing vertically. Tian means field, in the same shape as the present character. Here we can identify the pictographs zi, meaning sum, ren, meaning person, and wang, king. Some people try to write oracles. Here is a piece of writing, a four-line poem with five characters to a line. This is the famous poem Ascending Guan Chue Tower, written by a Tang Dynasty poet Wang Zhihuan. The white sun falls behind the mountain. The yellow river flows into the sea. If you want to broaden your horizon, you need to ascend another floor. Have you recognized the pictographs Shan Mu? Shan is mountain. The three peaks symbolize the numerous peaks of the mountain range. Mu means eye, looking like the eye with orbit and eyeball. Orbit is the rim of the eye. It is a written character. There are also signature and seals. Some people stamp the seal at the beginning. The seal at the beginning is usually rectangular. The next style is Jing Wen. Inscriptions on ancient bronze objects. Jing Wen is also called inscription on bell and ding. Bronze ding 
was usually in the shape of a tripod with three legs. The four-legged quadruped was also used together with tripod. Ding was originally a cauldron used to cook meat. Later evolved into a ritual object used in sacrificial ceremony. Ding was a symbol of social status. According to the rules of Zhou Dynasty, the emperor could use as many as nine dings, and the duke could use seven dings. The minister could use five, while the official below could use only three. There were also stringent rules on the size and the weight. Here is the tripod of Duke Mao. It has two vertical ears as handles, used in ancestral temple. It bears the longest inscription, four hundred and ninety-nine characters in all, vivid and true to life. It is now on display in Taipei Palace Museum. Here we can see the rubbing of the inscriptions on the tripod of Duke Mao. We may find bronze inscription of the character Wang, meaning king. Da. Is big, looking like the front of a human figure with arms and legs. How to make rubbings? Put the rice paper on the stone tablet or bronzeware, and apply ink. Then rub and brush. So the characters are white, and the background is black. The rubbing is uneven, with concave and convex, while printing is smooth. Sometimes the tablet inscriptions have been destroyed. However, the rubbing is well preserved. Thus, we can still appreciate the charm of the original inscription. Here is Da Yu Tripod, on show in China National Museum. It is more than one meter tall, solemn and grave. Da Yu tripod was cast about three thousand years ago, during the reign of King Kong of the Western Zhou Dynasty. During the Shang and Zhou Dynasties, the king would bestow bronzeware on his officials, while the latter. The officials would receive such articles as an honor. Da Yu tripod illustrates such power relationship. There is an animal mask pattern on it. Da Yu tripod. Bears the image of a Tao Tie, a legendary animal, notorious for its greed for food. Tao Tie has a head with a huge mouth. It does not have a body. It is so greedy that 
it has even eaten its own body. It is not clear why such a strange, greedy beast was popularly used to decorate bronze ritual objects. One possible reason was probably to use its malevolent image to ward off evil. Its interior is inscribed with two hundred and ninety-one characters, unusually numerous. According to the epigraph or inscription. General Yu was about to launch an expedition, and King Kong was warning him against drinking. Look at the rubbing. Have you found the character "da," meaning big? Wang meaning king, and the Yu, the crescent. The moon. Here is the plate of the San family, on show in Taipei Palace Museum. Its interior is inscribed with three hundred and fifty-seven characters. It was actually a land transfer contract, settling the dispute peacefully. Here is the rubbing. Have you found the character Wang, meaning king? Here, on the right. Is one rubbing of Jingwen, really works of art. And we may find the character Zi, meaning sun. Some people try to write Jingwen, and we may appreciate a piece of writing here. Usually. People stamp two seals below the signature, and we may find the character Wang, meaning king. Next came the giant seal character. Inscriptions on. Drum-shaped stone blocks of the Warring States period. Ten drum-shaped stone blocks were discovered. Each stone is carved with a poem, with four characters to a line. The ten poems. Mainly describe the hunting scenes. They were carved in the Warring States period, but there is dispute as to its period. Here are the rubbings. It is said to be written by the Grand Historian Shi Zhou. With curly strokes, this script is often used in seals known as giant seal character. However, it lacks uniformity, and many characters take variant forms. It must have caused inconvenience. It is just the transitional style. However, it is the earliest existing stone inscription in China. In two hundred and twenty-one BC, the first 
Emperor of Qin Dynasty ordered his Prime Minister Li Si to collect and sort out all the different writings to unify the written language. What Li Si did was to simplify the ancient seal character and create lesser seal character, which is often used in seals too. The strokes of lesser seal character are determined and finalized. There is only one form. Here is the portrait of the first emperor of the feudalistic society. Here we can see the stone carving on Mount Taishan by Prime Minister Li Si and the stone carving on Mount Yishan by Li Si. Both mountains are located in Shandong province. These are valuable relics of lesser seal character, which is tall and narrow. And we can find the character Wang, meaning king. Here is a tiger-shaped tally issued to generals for troop movement with seal characters on the back. And we can appreciate some seals. Seals can be cut either in intaglio or in relief. In intaglio, the characters are concave. In relief, the characters are protruding and convex. Official script or clerical script is the watershed. Clerical script also came into existence in the Qin dynasty in the wake of lesser seal character. Although lesser seal character was a simplified script, it was still too complicated for the scribes or clerks in offices. Further simplification was made by changing the curly strokes of lesser seal character into straight and angular ones. It was named Li Shu. Li meaning clerk or scribe. It was sorted out by Cheng Miao in the prison. Historically, clerical script of the Han Dynasty and regular script of the Tang Dynasty are of high quality. Daily official script was written on bamboo slips or silk with writing brush being casual and natural. Standard official script appeared in stone tablets or steles, being elegant, dignified, and standardized. Here we can appreciate Han Dynasty clerical script written on bamboo slips, really works of art. We can also find the character Wang, meaning king. Clerical script is short and wide, looking flat, oblate, and tasteful.
There's a saying depicting its beauty: head of a silkworm and the tail of a swallow. The beginning of the stroke looks like the head of a silkworm, and the end of the stroke looks like the tail of a swallow. Here we can see Zhang Qian Tablet, erected in the Eastern Han Dynasty, representative of Han Dynasty clerical script. At first sight, the square strokes may seem childish and clumsy. However, if we take time to savor it. It is really ingenious, vigorous, and tasteful, giving the sense of weight and volume. Now, shall we work on regular script? The clerical script led to the appearance of regular script. The model of Chinese script. The creator of regular script was Zhong Yao, of the Eastern Han Dynasty. The standard writing is square in shape, angular, non-cursive, and architectural in style. The characters consist of a number of strokes. There are eight kinds of strokes. Usually, we take the character Yong, for example. The eight kinds of strokes are mainly dot, horizontal, vertical, hook, rising, left falling. Right falling and bending stroke. All learners must start by regular script. There are four masters in regular script, in the order of O, Yan, Liu, Zhao. Ouyang Xun of the Tang Dynasty ranks the first. Here is the famous calligraphy copy book, inscription of Sweet Spring in Jiu Chen Palace. Many people begin with this copy book. Jiu Chen Palace was the detached palace of Tang Dynasty. The stone tablet was erected in 632. It had three wonders. The article was composed by Prime Minister Wei Zheng. The calligraphy was written by Ouyang Xun. It described how Emperor Taizong of the Tang Dynasty discovered a sweet spring while he was staying in the imperial villa to avoid the summer heat. The calligraphy was vigorous, rigid, straight, upright, thin. Graceful and well knit. O style is the most standardized. However, is the copy book authentic or original? Shall we make an analysis of the copy book? First, O Yang Xun would write. On the stone tablet with vermilion, the red pigment, and then 
the craftsman or artisan would carve the words into the stone tablet. Next appeared the rubbings, with concave and convex. And we could only have the printing being smooth. Thus, the characters had been carved, rubbed, and printed, even enlarged, having lost much artistic flavor. Many people begin with Yan style of the Tang Dynasty. The calligraphy of Yan Zhenqing is dignified, majestic, imposing, grave, solemn, and relatively fat. Here are two pieces of writing. One is manuscript. The other is rubbing. We can easily see the brush strokes in manuscripts. However, for rubbings, we have to penetrate into the blade, into the knife, to see the brush strokes. We must see through the cutting technique. The calligraphy of Liu Gongquan of the Tang Dynasty is vigorous, strong, regular, and very thin, simply bony and skinny. However, nowadays few people learn Liu style. The calligraphy of Zhao Mengfu of the Yuan Dynasty is soft, elegant, and beautiful, really nice looking. Today, few people learn Zhao style. Now, shall we move on to cursive hand? On the basis of clerical script, also evolved the cursive hand, which is rapid and swift, with the strokes running together. The characters are often joined up, with the last stroke of a character merging into the initial stroke of the next. They also vary in size, or seemingly dictated by the whims of the writer, by the sudden idea of the writer. Here is the cursive hint of Zhang Zhi of the Eastern Han Dynasty, seemingly written at one stretch. Huai Su was a crazy monk of the Tang Dynasty. His calligraphy is wild, unrestrained, and undisciplined, really fluid and carefree. The most widely used is running hand. Running hand is something between regular script and cursive hand. When carefully written with distinguishable strokes, it is close to regular script. When swiftly executed, it were approximate to cursive hand. Wang Xizhi of the Eastern Jing Dynasty is a great master, honored as the saint of calligraphy. 
It is said that when he was young, he blackened the water of the pond in front of his house by washing his writing implements every day after practice. In late spring, Wang Xizhi and his friends gathered in Orchid Pavilion in Shaoxing, Zhejiang Province. Drinking and composing poetry. The literati, the men of letters, sat on both sides of the winding brook. They put a wine cup in the upstream and let it float downstream. Consequently, the wine cup would stop in front of. A certain scholar, and he was expected to drink the wine and compose a poem. Wang Xizhi collected and compiled the poems of these scholars and wrote a preface expressing his inner emotion. He was in a delighted and peaceful frame of mind. The preface to Orchid Pavilion is on show in Palace Museum. It is the most representative masterpiece, the number one running script under heaven. People liken his handwriting to floating cloud and a frolicking dragon, vigorous yet refined and elegant. Take a close look, and we may find that every character is a gem. The first character is Yong, meaning forever, and the slim bamboo is really graceful, isn't it? The painting here portrays the poetic theme of floating wine cup along winding water. Funeral oration for my nephew was the manuscript, the draft written by Yan Zhenqing of the Tang Dynasty. It is honored as the number two. Running script under heaven. It is on display in Taipei Palace Museum. His nephew heroically and faithfully sacrificed for the country. He was very sad, angry, and emotional. His grief and indignation. Could be seen between the lines. The calligraphy was vigorous, fluid, magnificent, majestic, bold, and unrestrained, as if written in one breath. Here, the three characters are enlarged, revealing amazing beauty. When it was exhibited in Tokyo in 2019, people stayed in the long queue for several hours just to have a look, to have a glimpse at the masterpiece for a few seconds. Chinese masters have always compared vividly the three styles of writing. Regular script, running hand, and cursive hand to people standing, walking, and running. What are the tendencies of evolution of Chinese characters? Let's take the character fish for example. We can clearly see the evolution. 
or development of the character fish from Oracle inscription through Brahms inscription giant seal character to lesser seal character. The first line is the ancient stage. Giant seal character is just the transitional style. The character still takes variant forms. The strokes of lesser seal character are determined and finalized. There is only one form. The second line is the present stage, the watershed being clerical script. To summarize, there are two tendencies, from complicated to simple, from pictographic to abstract. Chinese characters are becoming more and more simple and abstract. Here we can see the evolution of two characters, dragon and tiger, from oracle inscription to Song typeface. Dragon is mythical and powerful. Chinese people claim to be the descendants of dragon. Tiger is the king of beasts in China, being majestic and ferocious. Tablet inscription of northern dynasties is the transitional style, mostly in the 6th century, or being regular script, imposing, majestic, robust, and masculine. There is a calligraphy school advocating the study of stone inscription, as opposed to the study of manuscript. The study of stone inscription focuses on rubbings of steely, precipice, cliff, and tombstone, gravestone, or epigraph. The calligraphy is upright, grave, imposing, well-knit, and stable, but less nimble and flexible lacking in artistic conception. In contrast, the study of handwritten manuscript is based on personal letters, manuscripts, and notes, being casual, authentic, and original. In China, Many people can write a good hand, but only a few of them could become calligraphers. It takes painstaking effort and years of assiduous practice. Practicing calligraphy after a copybook is the best way. There are four treasures in a traditional Chinese study writing and a painting brush, ink stick, xuan paper, the snow white rice paper, ink slab or ink stone. Other implements include paper weight, brush holder, brush rack, seal, and a red seal paste. Writing brush appeared very early. It was invented by General Meng Tian of the Warring States period. It paved the way for the emergence of 
calligraphy. The traditional writing implement is rather unique. It is made of animal hair, such as sheep, weasel, and rabbit hair. It feels soft, supple, elastic, and ductile. Ink stick is the black pigment made of pine soot, gelatin, and herbal medicine. In the ancient time, it was used to grind ink. Nowadays, most people use prepared Chinese ink. Snow White Xuan paper is the rice paper, including the unprocessed, processed, and half processed. The unprocessed or untreated rice paper tends to absorb water. The ink may seep, soak, blot, or spread out. It is suitable for freehand style, conveying artistic conception. The process is suitable for fine brushwork. Ink slab or ink stone is made of special rare stone. In the ancient time, it was used to grind ink. Nowadays, most people used prepared Chinese ink. However, many ink stones are exquisitely carved, really works of art. Hope you make great progress. Thank you very much.